Welcome back. We want to start looking at basic definitions. There's a whole language of statistics and, and a lot of terminology. Uh, I'm not going to pretend that it's the most exciting thing in the world, uh, but it's something we got to get through. We're going to have a common language we want to use, and so we want to know what the words mean. So I'm going to go through uh, what the basic definitions are and give you some examples on those and some chances to sort of um, distinguish between, um, between terms. So let's go ahead and get started here. So our first definition is data. So now that's a term you hear thrown around a lot, but what is data? You know, in, in one word, data is information. That's it, it's information. Uh, where does that information come from? Well, it may be gathered from observation, maybe a measurement, counting, or, or responses. A population is the collection of all outcomes, measurements, or counts of interest. A sample is a subset of a population. It's very important that we distinguish between these two. So let me consider, let, let's consider the, the, this example. This is an in, no, I'm just gonna mention it here. Let's suppose that you wanted to look at the age of a, of, of a resident in Los Angeles, namely the average age. Well, Los Angeles has three point something million people. If you had the ages of all three point something million residents in Los, of Los Angeles, you would have a population. On the other hand, you might say, whoa, I don't think that's actually feasible, much less practical, uh, to obtain all three plus million ages, maybe we can just take some of the people in Los Angeles and find their ages. So you go out and say, I don't know, you find 500 residents in Los Angeles and you get their ages. That collection of 500 ages, that forms a sample. So you see that the population is the collection in totality, whereas the sample is just a portion of that. Here's an example. 100 students were asked which they prefer, Facebook or Twitter. And um, we want to identify what the sample and population are in this problem. Well, the real question is, do those 100 students constitute the entire student body or is that just part of the student body? Most campuses, I'm gonna infer here, 100 students is only part of the student body. And so at the sample is gonna be the responses. And by responses, I mean Facebook or Twitter. The responses of the 100 students. Whereas the population would be the responses of all students. Okay, so the sample, that's those 100 students' responses, the population would be the responses of all students. Good way to visualize populations and samples is with a Venn diagram. Population, that's the totality. It's all the responses. That's all the ages of Los Angeles residents, whatever the context is. The sample is those 100 students or those 500 residents. It comes from the population. Why, why is this so important? Well, in the third part of this course, we're gonna learn how to take a sample and use it to make a meaningful statement about a population. That's known as an inference. And, and it's a very powerful, powerful component of statistics. And so being able to discern between samples and populations is, is very important. So we have some more definitions. Parameter, that's a numerical description of a population characteristic versus a statistic. Um, and when I say statistic, I'm not talking about the subject statistics. Uh, I'm talking about a statistic, um, which is a numerical description of a sample characteristic. So go back to the Los Angeles notion. 
If I had the ages of every single resident in Los Angeles and I computed the average or the mean, that would be a parameter. If I took the ages of 500 residents and found the average or mean of only those 500, that would give me a statistic. And so what we have is the um, statistic comes from the sample. Whereas the population is where we would get a parameter. It's not always feasible, rarely feasible, to be able to get our hands on, on a parameter. So most of the time, we'll be looking at a sample and obtaining a statistic, then using it to make some comment about a parameter and therefore a population. Here's an example. Determine if this number represents a parameter or a statistic. The average salary of a player in the NBA is $5.85 million. Well, there's no indication here that we've taken only some NBA players and found their salary. And, and because of that, we can assume that that $5.85 million actually came from the entire population of salaries. And so therefore, that number is a parameter. And I want to reiterate. Parameter is a number. That $5.85 million is a parameter. It's the average salary. Survey of 300 students found that 73% received financial aid. Well, again, on most campuses, this can be much larger than 300. So that 300 is a sample. And because 300 is a sample, that 73% is a statistic, okay? And so again, population will give us a parameter, a sample will give us a statistic. There are two branches of statistics. We have the descriptive branch, where we organize, summarize, and talk about how to display data. This is part one of our course. The other branch is inferential. That's where we draw conclusions about a population from a sample. Again, I might get a mean age or an average age from those 500 Los Angeles residents. I can use that average to make a statement about the average age of any Los Angeles resident. And I can do so with a prescribed reliability or accuracy. Well, that's inference. That's the inferential branch. And this is part three of our course. And so we've got part one, we've got part three. You might be asking, what's part two? Well, part two of our course is probability. And probability is gonna serve as the link between parts one and part three. Because whenever we make an inference, there's gonna be a chance that we are wrong. And if we're going to talk about chance, we're really talking about probability. So as we move forward, we're going to move forward with descriptive statistics. And then we'll move into some chapters and sections on probability. And then we will move into the powerful, powerful branch of statistics, which is the, the inferential branch. Thank you.